When it comes to Gunpla, there is no line of kits quite as confusing and all over the place as the Advance of Zeta line. Some kits are full release, most are premium Bandai, some kits are almost identical, some kits you need two of, some kits are just plain old color variations, some can't be used on their own, and don't even get me started on the naming system. This is Hazel. This is Hazel 2. One minute I'm thinking this is a Hazel, then this is a Hazel. Seriously, there's a big old chart on it and it still is no clearer. So before things get way too confusing, let's wind it all back to the beginning. As for Advance of Zeta itself, this was a photo novel and a manga, both published in different Dengeki magazines. It's set just after the original Gundam series and before the second Gundam series, which was Gundam Zeta. The whole purpose of these stories was to describe the development of weapons by the Titans test team. So because it was a series of designs in a magazine describing the development of weapons in the Gundam universe, that does mean a lot of the kits from this particular Advance of Zeta story share a lot of parts, have a lot of different customizable aspects, a lot of compatible parts, and in general a whole lot of customization across the line, especially the high grade line, it gets extremely messy. So because a lot of the kits are very similar, a lot are very different, there's a whole lot of fuckery going on, instead of reviewing these one by one and leaving you as confused as I was before I actually bought these things and checked them out, I'm just gonna group these together into three different videos focusing on similar kits. So essentially these can all be broken down into three different categories. Wound Wart derived kits, all of these are high grades, once again P Bandai, that's video one, this one right here. This second video will be Master Grade Hazel derived kits, We've already seen one of those before, but we've got a couple more to look at today. Well, not today. I'll do them today, but you'll watch them another day. And the third video will be talking about support units, and I won't be getting entirely into those because that is where things get extremely, extremely messy. And once again, I'll only be looking at the premium Bandai kits, not the full release kits, and the other full release kits that can go with some of the support unit parts to build other kits and all that kind of crap like what you're seeing right now. Hopefully by the end, it'll be a little clearer. But anyway, let's get right into this one. So anyway, once again, this video right here would not be possible without Bai because these are all premium Bandai kits and are not available through standard means. So if you're ever looking for any kits that are premium Bandai, rare, advance of Zeta, etc., there's a link down there in the description. Also, if you do sign up to the link down there in the description, you will get a thousand yen off coupon, which totally will take the sting off a high grade wound ward. Definitely. But anyway, here we go. So getting straight into this video and what we're going to be looking at today is the variants of the high grade TR6 which is also known as the wound wart and a bunch of other names depending on the parts that it's combined with so don't pay too much attention to the name it's the TR6 that matters here. So right off the bat there is the wound wart itself and this was a kit that I was going to completely and utterly ignore. Sure I thought it was interesting looking but Personally, nothing really drew me to it too much until I went and built it. It is so good. If you've never tried one of these, I highly recommend it. The wound wart right here, the standard white one that you're seeing right now, is a very interesting and unique kit. I will get back to that a little bit more later on, but I will just mention right here that this one out of the three I'm talking about today is my favorite, just because it's so good. Moving on to the second model kit we'll be looking at today, and that is this right here, which is the TR6 Hazel 2. Not to be mixed up with the TR1 Hazel, because that's a completely different mobile suit and the naming system is out of whack completely. Basically, when there's a 2 at the end, like Hazel 2, it means that it's emulating that particular mobile suit's specs and features. That's all that it means. It's confusing. But when you're talking about this purely from a model kit standpoint, this is exactly the same kit as the Wound Wart with some expansion elements to it. The first obvious one is the fact that the color is completely different. We also get some different weapons and accessories in here, but I did do an entire review on this kit right here. You can check out up there in the top right hand corner if you want to right now, because for the rest of this, I am going to gloss over this kit and just compare it somewhat to the other two kits. But at the end of the day, it's exactly the same kit as the Wound Wart, flipped into a different color, two massive cannons up there on its back, and this particular booster right here which is what gives it the Hazel 2 name. And this isn't even a part of a Hazel, it's actually part of the Heisenthle 2, which is this kit right here. So this section on its back is the same as this section up here on the back of the Heisenthle. And speaking of the Heisenthle, let's talk a bit about that before getting into the full nitty gritty. So this is what it looks like right out of the box, and it may not look like it at first glance, but this is very, very, very similar to the wound wart that we already saw. Actually, this is essentially a expansion, much like the Hazel 2 is. 
So essentially this kit does use a lot of the same runners as we saw in the wound ward with some extra. Again when I am comparing contrasting the kits I'll show you some things you may not have known about it because I sure as hell did not. But even at first glance you can see so many wound ward-esque aspects like the drum section in at the waist, the arms are identical to what we saw on the wound wart, and even if you flip it around to the back that little butt booster section there is exactly the same. Of course this thing has so much more mass, looks awesome, and in essence this looks like nothing I have ever seen before, but then again neither did the wound wart. These are some incredibly unique kits. And let's delve in a little bit deeper. Find out which is the one you want, or if you want them all. So anyway, while we're getting into this, this is the entire squad altogether. I will mention once again that from a lore perspective, these are all the TR6 wound wart. This is the standard form. This right here is a combat form, which is replicating the specs of the Hazel by using other mobile suits parts that aren't from the Hazel, but either way, let's not focus on that too much. And this right here is a high speed fighter form that is still considered the TR6 wound ward, just with another name. So we're going to start right into it with the standard basic wound ward. So getting right into it with a quick spin, I will mention at this point that I'm not going to do an entire review on this guy right here in the traditional sense because it's exactly the same as the high grade TR6 Hazel 2 which I've seen and reviewed already. So once again you can check that out if you want to, but this in my opinion is the superior looking kit. The white just makes all the details pop, the purple inner frame just looks awesome. And on the whole this thing, well if you were thinking it looks like an absolutely cute bunny, you'd be right because it is named after a bunny, but not a cute one. This guy here from Watership Down. This kit is so small, so simple, so effective and really uniquely designed. They've married a nice build quality with great articulation into something so simple and effective. That is something that I absolutely adore about this kit right here that the other ones kind of lose when they build so much on top of it. This kit also does have a transformation to mobile armor mode, once again that is super super cute. It is a bit of a parts formation, it might take a little while to get used to it to flip it from one mode to the other mode and this does require the transfer of parts. So once again if you want to check out the transformation of it, check out my Hazel 2 review because the transformation is almost, almost identical. But the worst part for me is you actually lose the entire torso and head when you transform it, so you're going to have to keep that separately when you keep it in mobile armor mode, which is a little bit of a letdown, but it keeps it nice and solid. I will just gloss over it at this point that once again the Hazel 2 is exactly the same, I mean exactly the same as what we see with the standard wound ward besides the color scheme and the extra weapons in the box. So we get an extra rifle, an extra shield, those massive rail guns for up on the shoulder as well as the little backpack that they attach to. This also has a transformation to mobile armor mode which to me is impressive. This thing looks off the chain cool. This looks like something from one epic side scrolling shmup game. Honestly, like I mentioned before, I'm not the biggest fan of the Titans color scheme because the details don't really pop as much. But if you love your Gundam's dark in that kind of Titans color, then this one is perfect. Once again though, I'm a bigger fan of the standard wound wart. So next up on the list then, and again named after a Watership Down character, this is the Heisenthle 2. Well, not the 2 part, but Heisenthle! So for me, my biggest fear about this kit did come true. The size aspect of it, even though it is based 100% on the wound wart, is just, well, the bulk means there isn't much in the lines of articulation. So this is meant to be a high speed flight version or a fighter version, so that's where all the interesting aspects come in really. Besides that though, the articulation is, well, there's a lot going on on this thing, that's for sure. Honestly though, this thing looks mad cool and one thing that I didn't expect about this is, and let's see if I remember how to take off this leg, there we go. As you can see when that's taken off, in here is essentially the wound wart's leg, look at that. It doesn't come out fully. So once again this does share a lot of aspects with the wound wart and it's kind of funny that the leg is inside of those absolutely huge big old angular legs. That's interesting. So as I haven't actually reviewed this kit right here at all properly, I'm going to just do the review in this video right now in the kind of traditional sense. You've seen the gist of what it looks like, it looks absolutely and utterly awesome, so let's check out what this comes with. But first, let's have a trip back memory lane and see what we got with the other kits. So as for the standard original wound ward kit, this is it with everything that it comes with. This is the most basic set, to me that's kind of preferable. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of having a big leftover baggie of stuff afterwards like with the uh... 
Hazel 2 right there. So what we get in here is that stand that it's on, these little wing little sections that attach onto the leg as part of the transformation of when it turns into the mobile armor mode. This segment here is for replacing the torso when you transform it to mobile armor mode. We've got two extra hands, these are holding hands as well as the ones we saw on it already which are the widespread open ones. And in here we've got one composite shield booster which is exactly the same as the two we saw in the full review of the Hazel 2. This does transform into multiple forms as we saw in that video as well. Just the same, just in white. And of course we have the parts in here for transforming it. So next up is that combat variant which is the TR6 Hazel 2. So compared to the wound wart this comes with an alternate booster round back which means we've got two of the composite shield boosters. But besides that the only real accessory difference is, is the fact that we get a beam rifle in here and a shield. So essentially it's the same kit as we saw before with extra in it. So now moving on to the third variant and that of course is the Heisen Clay 2. So essentially this comes with the exact same weapon we saw with the other kits which is the composite shield booster as well as the parts are transforming, the wire etc. And all of this jazz over here that is for parts formations as well as an adapter for the base for when it's in mobile armor mode. So that is a lot of parts for the transformations and there is more than one transformation here. There's a transformation for the upper part, the lower part and everything combined. As with the stickers in here it's essentially the same shtick as we saw before. So that is stickers for the eyes up there on top. A bunch of green ones for all the shiny little green bits all around the mobile suit and those big old long ones there, those are for on the blade slash railgun section of the composite shield booster. We also get a very small sheet of sticker style decals in here as well but on that colored plastic more than likely these will stand out quite a bit. So first off taking a look at the weapons and this is exactly the same composite shield booster we saw on previous kits and you might think at first this is in the same colors as what's on the Hazel 2 but it's actually got a lot more gray on it than that one actually does so it is a little bit different but just color wise. This attaches onto the arm using the standard pair of holding hands and I will mention that this always fits on a little bit on the awkward side. It never quite feels right and it's always at a bit of an odd angle. Even after taking out this little segment in the back of it, which is meant to be attached while held like this, it still looks a little bit on the, well, plain old awkward side. I find it hard to get a good pose out of this thing, well in general, but also especially when it's holding this. That segment I removed earlier can attach onto the back of the arm like so. So that of course can be used with the included wire just like so for using with the composite shield booster in that scarab looking mode just like we would have saw with the Hazel 2. But besides that all of the accessories are for using in the transformation to the various mobile armor modes so we'll take a look at that after the articulation. So anyway, on to the articulation and as usual from the head down I will mention if you want to see the articulation of the wound wart then you can check out my Hazel 2 video because it's exactly the same. So shock shock the head is a single ball joint so that means there's no giggity giggity here. Just a little bit of down up left and right and side to side tilt. Not a lot. The shoulder here is just a simple peg so that means it's just rotation right here. So that means no back and forward, nothing like that. As for raising it up here we've got two bits of articulation that's this one right here which moves this purple armor separate to the shoulder armor and this movement right here so whoa just check that out we've got the cannons then up on the shoulders they can rotate just like you're seeing right now as well as like so but that's about it the arm here can rotate all the way around at the upper arm funnily enough this is essentially an arm inside of an arm a wound wart arm inside of a sleeve almost so we have this for the bend at the first elbow i guess i'll call it and this at the bend at the second elbow for a total of that right there. Inside here as well you've got a second point of rotation which can move it like that inside of that sleeve segment. The wrist is the same as the one we saw on the wound wart which allows you to rotate it like so and we also have a bit of flexion extension here at the wrist, a nice wrist. So now as we move down towards the midsection a lot of armor starts getting in the way of everything. This is where the majority of the bulk is. So as for the ab crunch there it is all the way to the front and all the way back. So on that kind of circular drum section just like we saw with the wound ward. So once again there it is all the way forward all the way back. Not a whole lot but it's nice to have something and there's nothing side to side. All this skirting armor etc is just locked in place that doesn't do anything at all. The little wiener here at the front that can move up and down but once again that is just part of the transformation etc. Like I said this skirting armor stuff does not move so that does limit the leg. That's it all the way to the front. I mean no joke that is it all the way to the front. It's abandoning the base so so will I. 
As for all the way out for the splits, that isn't too bad there because the armor does not get in the way. Out to the back we get a little bit, but once again with these big old legs, it's not a lot. The bend at the knee here is nothing crazy either, it's just there to there. Actually, I'm gonna take the leg off at this point so you can see. Because there is a whole lot of crazy jazz going on in here, so this is the standard wound wart leg with this little adapter extending it. So that is inside of there and can move out and in like that. I'm not sure if that's actually a functional aspect yet, maybe in the transformation. The knee bend is just that right there, it doesn't go too far. We've got this little segment at the back which can move at two separate points, one in here, one up here. There's no rotation or anything like that there. We've got the most hilarious little foot down here. This can extend down by moving it down slightly like this, but look at that. It's got a tiny, tiny foot. All it does is move up and down like this. I don't think there's much else. Oh, there's a teeny little bit of pivot here. Man, <laughs> that's hilarious. The wound wart butt back here that can twerk up and down like so, but that doesn't really constitute much really when it comes to poses, etc. So if you're wondering, does it stand up? The answer is no, it needs that base. And if you're wondering, can you get a pose out of it? The answer is also no. It's always essentially just like this. Wound wart is better. But this kit right here is all about the transformations to mobile armor, so let's check them out. So moving on to the transformation, or should I say transformation one of three, First, we split it in half, and we're starting with the top half. You split this into a bunch of sections. Once again, just like with the wound wart, the head and the torso, they're just discarded in this mode. Instead, we get a couple of different adapter segments, which hold it all together and take the place of that part. It all just then recombines in a different way. The arms move out, turn into a pair of thrusters. The cannons point forward, and you do have the option as well to attach the composite shield rifle. However, I will mention that this doesn't really work well, because it always falls off or flops. The reason for that is, well, it's one of two reasons, and the first is, this little section here isn't really a peg. This isn't for putting into a polycap per se. This went into a normal 3mm hole, and it's also used for putting the wire into, but in this situation right here, it just isn't long enough or tight enough. And even when you do get that to hold, the whole thing is floppy, floppy, floppy. So all in all, this mode is okay, but it's just not perfect out of the box. Let's try the other one. So for this one, which is the G bottom fighter, once again, you have to strip everything apart. Again, it's a parts formation, not the most fun thing to do. It's not seamless, and it is a bit all over the place. The most interesting aspect definitely for me was the legs. There's a lot going on here, a lot of nice articulation, a lot of nice transformation. But besides that, it's a parts formation for the most part. You take the waist section you remove from the legs, attach it on, do a whole bunch of jutsu and shit, and it's done. And when it is done, it doesn't look all that bad. It actually looks really cool and is a lot sturdier than the G Top Fighter, that's for sure. So after paying your premium prices, etc., they only give you the one base, so you gotta evict this guy and his floppy weapon out of the way if you want to attach this one onto the base, and it ends up looking like that. Pretty rad looking, I must say, though. So finally, there's the G Top and the G Bottom Fighters, both finished, both of which do look pretty cool, I have to admit. The advance of Zeta mobile armors are some of the coolest looking I have ever seen, and they actually look like functional spaceships, which is cool. The G-Top looks like more of an agile, faster paced, smaller little unit, well it is a smaller little unit, and the G-Bottom is a bigger, thicker, bulkier mobile armor that just looks out and out awesome. And the next awesome thing is, you can combine them both, but... You have to separate them out and parts form them again. It's not just as simple as slapping them both together. So you do have to take off some parts, add on some parts, and my camera's low on battery, so I'll see you when it's finished. And that right there is what it looks like finished. And this is one serious looking mobile armor. It is massive. There it is, side by side with the standard wound wart. It is very, very big. As I totally forgot to do a size comparison of it, there is it up on the shelf for that general shelf presence test. It is pretty big, but I do feel that Bandai could have done a lot better with the included base in here. It's almost scraping the ground. This needs to be a little higher up than this right here. Finally, there's a quick spin so you can see every angle of this absolute monolith of a mobile armor. This really is awesome. I love me a good flight form, and this is one of the best I have ever seen. And you do end up with almost a little bit of a funny Gundam left over, if you wanted to. But honestly, myself, I think I'm gonna stick with the mobile armor for this, and for the upcoming version, the one in white, I'll probably keep that for the robot version. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Anyway, that right there is it for the review. As for the three model kits, I'm gonna give them their tiering straight away. 
Of course, the Hazel 2 we've seen before is gold tier. The Woundwart, without a single doubt, is gold tier as well. It has everything. It's small, compact, doesn't have too much stuff in the box. It can use everything all at once. The transformation's simple, and it's solid as a rock. So that is gold tier 2. However, as for the big has in play 2, that gets a silver tier from me. The reason for that is it doesn't really do a whole lot in either form. When it's in robot mode, it can't really do much at all besides stand there, can barely hold its weapon. And in mobile armor mode, it can just, well, once again, just be there. This is essentially a static model kit for the most part. So if what you are looking for from a kit is a parts forming, transforming Gundam that looks both great standing there as a bot, as well as one hell of an awesome looking mobile armor, then this right here is for you. The design is off the charts. But if you want something you can pose, look awesome in photos, etc., play around with a lot, then you're not going to get much out of this. And if you hate parts formations, you will despise this right here. But if you don't mind them, you might just love it. Anyway, that is it for part one on my series about Advance of Zeta Premium Bandai Kits, which can get a little bit confusing at times. Out of everything that's here, I have to say, to me, the standard white wound wart is a must-buy kit. You have to have it, it's so good. The other two, you could kind of do without. Unless you like awesome mobile armors, then you need them. Make sure to come back for part two where I'm going to be looking at master grade Hazel style kits. That is the TR1 Hazel. If you have any questions you'd like answered in that video, drop them down there in the comments. I will answer them in that. If you want to ask more about the Heisen Clay or the Wound Wart, drop them down there as well because I will be doing a part three on support units and they will be coming back into the video. Hopefully not too much though. Anyway, if you do want any of the kits you saw in this video, I got all of mine through Bai. There is a link down there in the description if you want to check out Bai. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time.